Instagram. This is Avani from uh, Heirloom. No, Hedgecraft Heirlooms. I apologize. I literally just changed my name and I'm still getting used to that. Um, it's just one of the things I'm going to talk about today in the pre-show. Um, for those who are joining me on on the replay, please throw a hashtag replay into the comments. If you're joining me live, hashtag live. As always, I'm in my new spot in my chair in front of my altar in my bedroom, which is easier on my back. And, um, hey Moon, Moonjik me, I am here today. We're going to be talking about metal magic. We're going to be talking about yellow brass specifically. In the meantime, while we, while we wait for folks to join us, I've to get my second window open on Facebook. I'm also going to be going over some changes that are happening in my shop right now, um, or my business, I should say, right now, that people need to kind of be aware of. And let me just get my second. Oh, look at that. How convenient. It popped up right here at the top of this second tab I opened up. If you're joining me on Facebook, I apologize in advance that the lighting is terrible. I It's actually not terrible. I am using my husband's tablet because my infant son, who is almost a year old, um, knocked water onto my tablet and it got directly into the charging port and so I need to bring it to the doctor, so to speak, this weekend so we can get it fixed. Um, so right now I'm using his and the lighting on it just kind of sucks. Hey Whimsy Woods, Wix, we are here today. I'm going to be talking about Yellow Brass, but first I have some announcements about uh, my business, some changes that are going on. Um, Thanks for the wave. If you're here watching, if you can throw a hashtag live into the comments, if I'm watching on the replay, hashtag replay, as always, helps other folks find us. Um, so well, while we're waiting, let me go over these things I want to talk about with all of you. Um, first of all, um, especially if you're catching this on the replay and you heard me from the very, very beginning, um, which was just a few minutes ago, so you didn't miss much. Um, I very, very recently, as in today, earlier today, made um, an official change to my business name. So it is now going to be Hedgecraft, wow, I can't even say it yet, Hedgecraft Heirlooms. Um, so I've been kind of, for the past, let's see, it started March, April, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. So the past nine months, kind of like uh, carrying a baby, I've been kind of grinding away at this business and kind of trying things out and seeing what works. And I've been feeling for a while like what I really need to do is kind of narrow down my focus and get a lot more specific about the things that I offer and the products that I create. And I have made a decision on that. And so um, Hedgecraft Heirlooms is a reflection of that. I'm going to be focusing more on vintage and antique um, altar items and also my personal favorite, the place where antique slash vintage and handmade kind of meet. Um, so if you've seen my stuff before, like, you know, my vintage framed art or the candles that are poured in vintage containers. Um, I, I also have plans to continue making my magical oils, but selling those also in vintage containers and some other ideas that I'm kicking around in my head that I haven't actually done yet. Um, I don't want to overwhelm myself because I kind of want to stick with what I'm comfortable with and then slowly work up to it. Right now I'm in the midst of making changes across the board, changing my name on Facebook and Instagram, um, getting a new email address set up, getting um, a new, um, my Etsy taken care of, which Etsy is live, there are some things on it, those things are not also on my website, um, those are things I'm just in the midst of kind of getting pulled up, it's, um, it is on, also on Etsy, Hedgecraft Heirloom, so you can always find that there. Um, and then what else do I have here? I don't want to forget anything. Ooh, wrong page. Here we go. Um, oh, so uh, once I switch over completely to Hedgecraft Heirlooms, which probably will not be until the new year completely officially, um, just because I still have a Yule collection to get out there that I want to kind of that I'm working on and I want to be able to release in time for you guys because I have a lot of people that kind of expect that is a thing that I've been doing where I create the rituals and the items to go with it and I'm still kind of um, hey hey Kennedy Sketa we're here going to be talking about yellow brass momentarily but I'm giving everyone some updates on my business um, while we wait for folks to show up um, you may or may not have noticed that I recently changed my name as in t earlier today to Hedgecraft Heirlooms um, uh, again if you're here joining me hashtag live um, or hashtag replay in the comments would be great. It helps other folks find us. Um, here we go. Again, especially if you're on Facebook, because Facebook doesn't show me when people show up like Instagram does. Um, yeah, so Hedgecraft Heirloom. Um, once I make the official switch um, completely, which is probably not going to be until um, after um, Christmas slash, you know, so probably in, like early January, late December, um, I am no longer going to have um, my regular website. So ecstaticearthearts.com is going to go away. Um, and I'm going to move my online store completely over to Etsy. 
um, which I think is going to be really, really great. Hey, Wild Woman Wildlife, I'm going to be talking about Yellow Brass here a second, in a second right now. I'm getting over some updates on my business. Thank you so much. I was just talking about that. Hey, Pagan Zombie, Hedgecraft Heirlooms, it's the new thing. I'm going to be doing more antique vintage um, and where antique and vintage kind of meets handmade kind of stuff, um, which I'm coming, like, kind of, like, you know, narrowing down what I want to do over the past several months, and this is kind of what I'm settling on, and I'm excited about it, too, so I'm glad you're excited about it. Um, so January, um, ecstaticearthearts.com is going to be going away, going to be moving over to Etsy. The Etsy is already up, it's already active, you can check it out, but it's not, I haven't done, like, a grand opening or anything yet. Um, and, uh, so the only thing that I'm really going to be missing on squares that I'm going to be missing on Etsy, um, especially, you know, that I can't really get on Facebook or Etsy specifically is my blog. So, um, right now I'm kind of trying to, in the midst of trying to figure out if I want to do my blog on directly onto my Facebook page, which isn't my favorite option. Um, or I'm in the midst of very, very, very slowly trying to get a WordPress site put together. Um, but I am not exactly a web design whiz, so it's real slow going, lots of Googling, lots of YouTube videos. So, uh, bear with me. Like I said, hopefully all of that is officially up and ready, um, for January. And hopefully I can actually export my blog from Squarespace, um, to, um, WordPress um, relatively smoothly, so I don't have to worry about that. The other thing I want to announce really quickly before we get into what y'all came here for is my Yule Collection drop date. So I talked about that a little bit a couple seconds ago. That's kind of what's um, keeping me from doing a switch any earlier than that. I want to get through Yule first because I already have all my plans set in place for that. Um, so my Yule Collection drop is going to be on Monday, November 23rd at 7 p.m., which means everything is going to go live at that point in time. Because everything is handmade, because it's things that I make myself in my, um, you know, the time that I have available, whatever amount of time that happens to be every week to week, day to day, um, there are very limited quantities. So make sure that you log in on Monday, the 23rd at 7 p.m. to make sure you do not miss out. Um, and it will be the last collection that is released under Ecstatic Earth Arts, so give it a nice send-off. Um, and then, of course, if you were thinking of asking, um, I will, do, of course, do a rather large clearance at the end of the year, probably just after the holidays or maybe just before. I haven't decided yet. Probably would make more sense to do it just before. Um, probably mid-December-ish. Um, so if people want to get some really, um, you know inexpensive holiday gifts um, right in time for the holiday. I'll have that available for you guys too. But anyway, that said, let us actually talk about what you came here for officially, and that is yellow brass. We're going to be talking about yellow mag uh, yellow <laughs> metal magic. Oh, hey, Katie, I just saw your comment. I was on a different tab so I could look at my little outline one minute ago. Thank you for the luck, wishing, well wishing for the new name, new business, all the things. I appreciate it. But don't worry, I'm still planning on coming on Fridays at 4 and give you guys information. As always, if you ever have suggestions or things that you want to hear about, please throw them into the comments because I love giving you guys what you want. That's really what this is all about. Um, all the way around. So, um, and then originally this week, you know, so if you uh, came here from a, a social media post about going live today, you may have noticed that my pre-show was supposed to be something about completely different. Um, that's because I kind of like just today, this morning was like, oh, I have a few spare moments. Why don't I start the whole name change thing and kind of like on a whim just kind of like did it. Because <laughs> uh, originally I was going to do it kind of over the course of this week and then make the announcement next Friday. So next Friday I will do... Uh, my post harvest activity list for you guys and then and then this week I kind of moved it over instead so but don't worry I'll continue announcing when the drop product drop is too so all the things um, let's talk about yellow brass for real now um, so here we go so first of all when every time I like to talk I do these magic series whether it's gemstone goddess um, eventually I'm sure I'll do herbs and plant magic too I just haven't gotten there yet um, anytime I do any of these sort of magic series, I always like to talk about the science and history of an object or an item or a material before I go into the magic part, because I feel like there is a ton of connection between them. And I think it's really important to understand one to understand the other. Okay, hey, two offerings here. We're going to be talking about metal magic. We're talking about yellow brass today, which I'm covering because I have, you know, you may or may not notice if you've ever gone looking for vintage or secondhand or antique altar tools and what have you is that there is a lot of yellow brass out there so and there's not a ton of information out there about what the magical properties of it are so I'm here today to save save the day and um, explain all of that to you um, so anyway history and science of yellow brass um, so brass in some form or another has actually been used since Neolithic times which is really really far back however the original version of it was often called calamine 
Um, and it had a different name because it was not made the same way that the brass that we think of today is made. Um, it, it, the reason, uh, you know, brass is an alloy, which an alloy, if you're not familiar with that term, means two base metals that have been mixed together. You know, so like if you look at a periodic table of elements, you know, like silver is, uh, is an element and gold is an element and copper is an element. You don't see brass anywhere on this, the periodic table of elements because it's an alloy. It's a mixture of the two. Um, however, the, the two metals that brass is made out of are copper and zinc. Um, and Neolithic times, there was really no way to get pure zinc. So they would, they kind of like made their way around that to kind of make something that was like what we think of today as brass, but it wasn't exactly the same thing. So it had a different name. Um, it wasn't until the 18th century that they were finally able to create the bra brass like in the way that we think of it today. Um, and it can have lots of other inclusions in it other than zinc um, and lead and tin and some other things. Uh, but but the copper and zinc specifically are what make brass as we think of it, with other things often mixed in a little bit. But that's the, the primary constituents of it. Um, and the reason why brass is so widely used or was so widely used, um, not as much today, but you still certainly see it used in different different places, um, it is, is prized for its durability. It was very easy to work with. It was very malleable, but it was also very durable at the same time. Um, you know, unlike a lot of those base metals I was talking about that, you know, have a little square on the periodic table of elements, um, brass is much harder and it uh, stands up to abuse a lot more, which made it really good for lots of, you know, very practical uses. Um, another really cool fact about brass, and I actually discovered this in my research for when I was putting together this outline for you guys today, is that brass is actually antimicrobial, which is I'm going to say that again because I think it's so cool. Brass is antimicrobial, which means that any microorganism, especially bacteria, that sits on the surface of brass will usually die within hours to days of being on that surface. And the cool thing, in a way, is that a lot of scientists don't even completely understand why it does that yet. And I just think that's like the coolest thing. So it made me feel really good about going like antique shopping that when I'm touching things that are brass in the middle of a pandemic that like, you know, I'm not going to die because I'm out shopping. <laughs> so that's a cool story. So brass, antimicrobial. Now you know that thing. Um, but brass, historically speaking, was used in the production of things like um, coins and actually is still used to make coins today. Um, two offerings says, this is great. I love brass. Glad. I'm so glad you're enjoying yourself. Like I said, there's not a ton of information about this out there as far as like the magic of it. And I really thought it was a valuable thing to share because it's so used and nobody really knows anything about it. So, um, so yes, yeah, so coins are a big thing. Another thing that's commonly used for is for the lining of boats. Um, again, because it flexes really well and it's really malleable and they can get it really, really thin while it stays very durable. Um, hardware, it was frequently used a lot for nails. Um, and even and in today is actually used a lot in plumbing and hardware. Um, also, again, historically, it was used in the gears and what have you um, for both clocks and astronomical devices, which is like super cool. Um, also in printing presses and in cutlery. So those are, um, and of course, these are, this is just like a, a handful of things that it was used for. It's been used for lots of things over the course of time. Um, so some other things, so I mentioned a couple modern uses in that, um, some other modern uses are jewelry. That's actually why I wore these very fancy pieces. This is yellow brass with, um, smoky quartz on it. I love these. Um, and then I also am wearing this brass necklace. I actually got this at an antique store, which is why I thought it was particularly appropriate today. Uh, my brass moon. Um, so, and I, I wrote here jewelry, especially what I wrote is cheap body jewelry. One of the reasons why brass was so popular too, historically speaking, is that it, it, it very much resembles the color of gold, but is not nearly as costly or rare, well now anyway, rare as gold is. So in a, on a lot of like body jewelry sites, even currently, you'll find a lot of things that are made out of brass because it looks like gold, but it's not gold. But be very, very careful because uh, people tend to be much more likely to be allergic or have issues with alloys as opposed to base metals. So always be careful with that. If you have a fresh piercing, you should not use brass. You should always use uh, gold or stainless steel. Um, gold is one of the least um, allergy inducing materials actually on the planet, which is kind of a cool story. Um, that's just a random piece of trivia I happen to know unrelated to brass based on my um, previous work forever ago when I, believe it or not, worked in the dental field. <laughs> uh, 
Um, let's see, what else? Oh, musical instruments, of course. Think about like your trumpets and your trombones and your tubas, all brass instruments, and that's because they literally tend to be made from brass. Um, and then ammunition casing, like, you know, bullets. Um, and of course, like I said, still coins. So that all kind of bared in mind, we can kind of extrapolate from that and think about um, what the magical properties of brass ultimately are. Um, obviously, we can, um, you know, the first thing that we can think of is prosperity. Brass is absolutely associated with prosperity, first of all, because when it was first made, it was actually very rare and difficult to come by because of the issues refining zinc. Um, so it was very, very expensive. In fact, that's why a lot of um, antique and vintage items from India, where it was um, produced and they had, um, and actually I'll show you this piece real quick because it's a great example. So this is called an elephant bell. You can see this really beautiful engraving in it. This type of work came out of India. Um, but India was sort of renowned for this really, really beautiful, intricate and engraving work. Um, and as a result, because they made this really beautiful work and it was very high quality metal, um, I'll show that off later more, don't worry. Um, show it off later, um, ugh, brain, mouth, sorry, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, because of that, it was, it was very, it was a very, um, expensive and rare metal. It's a lot more common today or became much more common later on. Um, you know, and of course also used for jewelry. So both things that are associated with someone who is wealthy or well off and has money to, to burn, so to speak. Um, so therefore associated with prosperity for sure. And of course, um, also associated with creativity. Um, we talked about the idea of it being used in pieces for uh, printing presses and for musical instruments, which are both things that are used for self-expression through music or through writing, um, or even illustrative work. We're talking about printing presses. Um, and it also used for protection. It's a very protective metal. Um, again, we can relate that back to the fact that um, it was used for things like ammunition, and I didn't write about it earlier, but it was also commonly used for armor, also especially in ancient Rome. And, uh, and finally, brass is a metal that is associated with the element of fire. Um, now, and every metal has sort of different associations for elements uh, kind of pinned to it. Um, so one of the things I was kind of doing in the midst of putting this together, I was like, well, why is brass associated with fire? And I have, I have a couple of theories on that. First is the high temperature that is required to, to refine zinc in order to, to create brass in the first place. The other one, which seems much more likely to me, is that brass resembles gold, and gold is associated with the sun, and the sun is associated with fire. So that's kind of my best guess for, for why, but it is definitely a fire metal. And that in mind, if you guys have any questions about anything, because that's all I have you on brass, I'm going to show off some really beautiful brass pieces that I have for you. All of these are available in my shop right this moment. If you like any of them, of course, you can PM slash DM me, depending on the platform you're on, um, and let me know, and I can get you hooked up. Alternatively, of course, you can always go to my website. Um, if you're on Instagram, you can go to the link in my bio, and you can get a 20% off coupon on your first purchase, so that's pretty cool. Plus, it signs you up for my email list. So you get email articles and special offers and all kinds of great things. Um, and or if you are on Facebook, you can go to the link that is in this video description. It's the same thing. So that said, um, let me show you, talking about fire, this is what I wanted to show you first. This is a, hey Mystica92, we just had a big talk about yellow brass. I'm just about to show off some of the yellow brass items I actually have in my shop. Um, feel free to watch them because they're beautiful. But if you want to go back and rewatch from the beginning after, I think you might really enjoy it. Um, so anyway, this is a brass cauldron slash fire starter. Hey, more recyclable. We're here talking about yellow brass today. Um, I actually just finished most of my discussion about it. I'm just showing off some of the yellow brass in my shop right now. Um, so this is a brass. I have it as listed as a cauldron, but officially this was used as a fire starter. Um, and I actually did some Googling to figure out what that was. It was labeled as a fire starter. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but it's a pretty cauldron. So I'm going to get it. Um, hey, Mystica. Um, so, but I had looked up and this is what it is. So it has a lid, obviously, and it comes with this handy dandy little wand. And you're like, what the heck is this? This is how this works. So the way that this was used is this was kept by a wood stove or a fireplace and they would fill it with kerosene and then they would soak this. This white head here is actually made of um, ceramic and they would soak this in the kerosene. And then when they were ready to light a fire, they took the wand out. They lit it on fire cause it was, it was soaked in the kerosene and they would put it onto their fire that they had built and it will burn for a good 10 minutes 
um, just from the kerosene that has soaked into it. So fire starter. But of course you could use it just like this um, as a regular cauldron without the fire starter piece. But I think this is really neat. My husband and I actually talked about keeping this piece because we thought it was so cool. But if you really, really like it, I'm happy to give it to you because I have yet to actually use it. But that might have all been lip service on our part. <laughs> all right, let's see. Let me show you. I'll show you the bell that I had. So this here, this is this beautiful piece. I love these. This is actually called an elephant bell. Um, and it's, it's sort of dis, you know, distinguished by these um, inward facing prongs um, and uh, its shape. And the reason why it's called an elephant bell is because in India they were literally tied to elephants uh, for decoration purposes. And I, as you can see, it has, makes a beautiful sound. Um, part of the reason why these bells are so kind of cherished by me personally um, is I have a bell like this that I keep on my ancestor altar that belonged to my grandmother. So these types of bells always remind me of my grandmother. Um, elephant bell, brass, gorgeous. And um, the way I like to use bells in ritual is usually to signify the start and the end of a ritual. Um, usually I use, oh it's not over here. Usually, um, oh it is, here we go. Um, these are actually new but usually what I use for my rituals I use tingsha. That. But they're also brass, so lots of brass, brass everywhere, and also I believe made in India. Uh, but these are modern, so not nearly as exciting. Um, let's see. Also, I have this little itty bitty spoon. So spoons like this are really wonderful for scooping incense onto charcoal dishes, or if you're someone who likes to make your own herbs or teas and blended incenses, this can be really great as a scoop. Um, as you can see, it has this little candle pattern on it. So this is a very fiery little spoon. Super cute little spoon. Um, and then this is actually the piece that is um, on the the image that I posted on Instagram and Facebook to announce the fee this um, stream today. It's this beautiful, sleek, um, vintage brass mortar and pestle. So this wand here is the pestle. I love this thing because it is really solid and actually kind of heavy. And it just, I don't know, it has a really wonderful feel in my hand. Like I can imagine, I love the idea of getting, of, you know, using something like that and it just feeling, I don't know, it has like a, just a great feeling to it. So this little mortar and pestle is awesome, love. Um, and then I've got two more things to show you and then we'll, I'll sign off for the weekend with a, uh, wishing you a happy one. Um, I'm showing you guys this piece because Christmas is coming, the goose is getting fat very, very slowly. I know that no one wants to talk about Christmas because it's only November and Thanksgiving comes first, but hear me out. And I've been talking about this in my Facebook group a lot. Um, if you look at the wheel of the year, it goes Lamas, Mabin, Samhain, Yule. Thanksgiving is not on the wheel. Therefore, it is Yule season because Samhain is over. So I'm showing you this because it's officially Yule season. This is in a super adorable um, creamer and sugar bowl set. That's what it was for originally. But I think that these make wonderful salt and water dishes. Salt, water, because, you know, it has a spout. Um, I don't know how well you can see. I'm going to take these little guys off so you can see this plate better. Um, this plate actually has a little... Um, holly pattern all the way around it. Hey, Plants Breathe, we're here talking about yellow brass. I'm just showing off some of the yellow brass that I have available in my shop right now. Um, by all means, watch the whole thing, watch all of this, but then go back and rewatch from the beginning because you missed a lot of great information, um, including some stuff about some announcements and changes about um, the business, like the name, which I'm sure you probably noticed. And um, when my next, when the drop date for my Yule collection is, so go and check that out. Um, but anyway, I love this, the holly on the plate. So the, the plate um, is included with the set. So this would be really, really lovely to use on a Yule altar. Like I said, you can find these pieces on my website currently. And if you sign up for my VIP list, which is linked from my bio um, and in the um, video description on Facebook, you can totally get 20% off today. So don't miss out because this is the only set. These are all like one of a kind pieces that, only, that I've only got one of. So if you like them, grab them because they will not last. And then the final thing I want to show you. Um, so I mentioned at the beginning when I was talking about the name change and what have you that um, I, my big focus is uh, that I'm kind of moving into now is antique vintage and uh, my personal favorite, the place where antique and vintage meets handmade. Um, so this is one of such items. So this is a vintage um, brass, yellow brass frame, and it has this really cute little kickstand. This is how you um, set it on a table. 
I'm going to close that though because it's kind of in the way if you're not using it like that. Um, and this is um, one a framed print of my Empress artwork, tarot artwork that I did um, earlier this year. I love the idea of the Empress with the heart shape. First of all, the, the architecture in the back and the artwork is sort of has this same shape as the frame, so it kind of fit in there really lovely. Um, and I love all the flowers. The flowers to me kind of um, kind of all tap into, well, there's all these flowers here at the base. Um, kind of a cool story that all the flowers in this piece of artwork are either associated with the planet Venus or the planet Saturn, which are both associated with the goddess. Um, as are, and you might not notice this, you might not, you know, ever, I don't know even if I have this written anywhere, um, but there are several constellations worked, don't ask me what they are, I don't remember anymore, but several constellations worked into the sky here, which are also the ones that are associated with Venus and Saturn. Um, and we have, so there's foxglove and there are roses and there is English ivy and daffodils. And I think that there is also, um, it's hard to see cause it's kind of in the corner here, but those are, oh shit. I'm, I'm, I'm flaking on it. I literally have them in my backyard and I can't remember what they're called. They're little purple, um, five petaled flowers. They're like, they're not asters. They're not phlox. There's something else I can't remember, but they're also, so I put them on here because I was like, oh, I have those in my yard. I like how that kind of ties it into me personally. Um, and there's also a ton of English ivy in my yard too. So that's a big part of why I included those actually. But so we have the Empress. Um, she is lactating cause she is a mom and she has the earth here as her baby in her belly and the, she's pouring water over it um which the main reason why i included that imagery is because it came to me in a vision um so if it means something to you let me know in the comments because i would love to know what other people think that means because it's totally open to interpretation um and of course she has the moon blessing tiara on her brow also and she's she's lounging you know i kind of like remember thinking to myself when I was coming up with this piece, like, you know, should she be laying down? Should she be standing? You know, but my, my rationale was that this is, um, the quintessential, you know, sacred feminine goddess figure. And she can sit if she damn well wants to, because she's a queen, <laughs> you know, she's laying down because other people are there to serve her just as she's there to serve and provide for her children, meaning the earth in the situation. So anyway, that's the goddess. This is also available on my Etsy, on my website, and all the places. Um, if you love any of those items I just showed you, like I said, you can always send me a private message and I will hook you up. And of course, you can always go onto my online stores, plural now, um, and get it for yourself. And if you sign up for my VIP list, if you haven't already, you can get 20% off your first purchase. And uh, really quick, because there's only a few of you left, so you guys get this really special little um, heads up. Um, November 15th is something called America Recycles Day, and you can probably guess what my favorite way of recycling is. Antiquing. <laughs> so I am running a special sale. So if you haven't signed up for my list already, go and check it out because only the people on that list are going to get notification of the sale and the coupon code so they can check it out. All of these things and more um, are going to be on sale. So that said... I am glad you all joined me. I hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend and that you take care. Be well. Blessed be.